Welcome back to our video tutorial series where we are learning how to create Minecraft worlds using Python code. In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to add a swimming pool into your world. It's going to look something like the one you can see on your screen at the moment. It's got the white colored coping tiler on the outside and the water inside of it and you can also jump in if you want to go for a quick swim. You can see those tiles are carried on throughout the inside of the pool as well. Okay, so it's a fairly straightforward build. There's not too much code. So let's jump over to Mew, which is our Python editor, and get started on coding. Um, so first of all, I'm not going to bother writing this in for you. I've got it in already, but I want you to add those usual two first lines of code that we add in to um, Mew. The first line of code just imports all the functions from the Minecraft library to allow us to build in the Minecraft world. And the second line of code just connects Mew, which is our editor, up with Minecraft. So the two programs talk to one another. Coming in below that, I also want you to add in the two lines of code that will completely clear your world to give you that empty blank canvas that we like to work with. Okay, so if I just quickly look around my world there, you can see that it's completely flat and it's just got the grass all over the surface. That's what I'd like to work with today. So each time we run our program, we get a clean slate to work with. Okay, so you've done those two, all those two sections of code. There's four lines of code before, so make sure you whack them in. And now we'll get started on doing the pool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell my player to go to set coordinates when I run my program. So to do that, what I'm going to do first of all is put in a comment that just says move the player to a set position. And the coordinates I want to use for my player, I need to write mc.player.setPos. Make sure you got a capital P there for pos. That just stands for set position. And inside brackets, you just type in the three coordinates where you would like your player to end up when you run your code. So I want it to go to zero on the x-axis, one for the y-axis. That makes sure he's just standing on top of the grass. And then for the z-axis, I'm going to do zero as well. Then I'm going to close my brackets off. So by using this set position function and listing the three coordinates, what's going to happen is when I run my program, I'll just need to save this first of all. Um, Minecraft code, we're up to tutorial seven, so I'm going to call this number seven pool. And you'll see in a sec, my world turns completely flat. That's just that blank canvas I was talking about. And if you look at the coordinates in the top left-hand corner here, I know it's a little bit hard to see in the video. My position is now zero on the x-axis, one on the y-axis, zero on the z-axis. So I've now got my starting position for my player. And what I'm going to do is build a pool just next to the player. So on my next um, few lines down, what I'm going to do is set the coordinates for the pool. So I'm just going to write pool coordinates as a comment and I'm going to list the x, the y and the z coordinate by going x equals 5 so that's going to be just next to where the player is basically spawned in the game uh, for the y value I'm going to set it to 0 that way it's getting built into the ground this pool and for the z axis I'm going to set that to 0 as well just to keep it simple so it's basically near the center of our world so they're coordinates that we're using. The next thing we need to set up for our pool is the size of the pool. I'm going to create some variables here. So my comment will say size of pool. And I'm going to set up the length. And I'm going to set the length of the pool to about 10 blocks. And I'm going to set the width of the pool to half that, so 5 blocks. So that is going to be the length and the width of our pool. And just for something a little bit different, this time I'm going to list the materials that I'm going to use to build this pool. I'll show you where this comes in handy a little later in the video, but what I'm going to do here is list the pool materials that I want to use. So if I go to my block ID list here, it's going to take a sec to load. We know we're going to need water in our pool. So I can either use number eight for the water, which is flowing water, or I can use stationary water, which is water that sits in your world but doesn't actually move if, say, the walls fall down in the pool. So I might just stick with stationary water for now so it doesn't make a mess of my page. So I'm going to create a variable here called water. And I'm going to write equals 9 because it's 
block ID number is number 9. So I'm going to set this variable water to number 9. Now I also need to choose a block to use for the outside and the inside tile of the pool. So the one that I used before was quartz. It's over here. It's a quartz block. And it's number 155. So I'm going to call this quartz. And I'm going to set that variable quartz to 155. And we're going to use these variables very shortly in our code. So we'll come back to them in a moment. You can see um, how I'm using these in just a moment. So now that we've got everything set up, we've got where we want to put the pool with the coordinates. We've got how big the pool is going to be. And we've got the materials. We're ready to start actually building the pool. So we're going to start with the shell of the pool. So I'm going to put a comment here that says pool shell. And for the pool shell, what we need to do is write mc.setBlocks. We should be used to using that little function now. The setBlocks function allows us to place multiple blocks on the screen at one time. And what we need to do first of all is uh, write down our start position. So the starting coordinates. Where do we want this pool to start? And we simply want it to start at the x, y, z coordinates that we listed up here. Okay, so we take the values out of those buckets or those variables here and we place them in here. So it'll be starting at 5 on the x-axis, 0 on the y and 0 on the z-axis. Now once we have the starting position for the pool shell, what we're going to do next is list the end position. So where do we want these blocks to stop? So what I'm going to do is write x plus the length of the pool. So we're going to run this pool along the x-axis and it's going to go along 10 blocks and it will stop. For the y, we're going to do y minus 2. So remember we started building the pool at ground level and we're going to go minus 2 which means it's going to go two blocks deep into the ground. And then for the z, we're going to do z plus width. Okay, so it takes our z value which is currently 0, so the z coordinate is 0 and we add 5 to it, so it's 5 for the width. And that there are the coordinates we're going to be using for building the shell of our pool. Remember at the end, the last thing we need to do is put a comma and tell the computer which block we're going to use to build the shell of the pool. Now in previous videos, I've put a number here. I've just taken the block ID number. Remember we were going to use quartz, so we could write in 155 here and close our brackets, and that would work just fine. In fact, let's run it and have a look. So if we run that, just click over in our Minecraft world and look around. There we go. We can see our pool shell at the moment. It doesn't look like much. What I want to do, though, this time is change the 155 here, and instead I'm going to write the word quartz. It's a little bit more meaningful. So we now know that our pool shell is going to be built out of quartz. So if I run that again, you'll see this reappear, but nothing's changed. Okay, it's still the same code basically. We've just switched some numbers for a word with a bit more meaning. All right, so, so far so good. That's our pool shell. The next thing we want to do is add the water to the pool, and it's not much different to what we just did. So let's put in a comment that says water. We're going to go mc.setBlocks, and in brackets, we need to put the start position for the water. So we're going to start just inside of the tiles. So instead of starting right on the edge, we're going to come in one. So for the x, what we're going to do is write x plus 1. y is going to stay the same. We're going to stay at ground level there for the water, and z plus 1. What that is doing is just bringing our water one block inside so we're not building right to the very edge of these tiles. Okay, so those are the three starting coordinates for our water. Now we just need to tell it how far it needs to stretch on for before it stops. So for the x, what we're going to do is write x plus length minus 1. Uh, for the depth of the pool, we're just going to do y minus 1. And then for the z, we're going to do z plus width minus 1. Okay, so there are all the coordinates in. I know that's a little bit confusing, but copy it exactly and you'll get what I'm getting. And the last thing I want to add in is the block for the water. Now, we've wrote, written water up here. E is equal to 9, so I could write the number 9 here for water. 
but to give it some more meaning, instead I'm going to use the variable called water. It's still equal to number 9, like up here. So it's just the same as writing the number 9, but instead I'm writing water. So I now know that the water is obviously made out of the water block. And that's about it. So let's give that a run and we'll see how our pool ends up looking. Okay, so you can see our water has now been added and it's gone and dug into the ground a bit. So we can jump in, have a quick swim around and fly our way back out of there. So that has got our pool working. Now you might have also noticed when I started running the game, or not the game, just ran my code, my player always starts in that position of 0, 1, 0 for the three coordinates. You watch if I just go for a bit of a fly here to a random location, you can see up in the top left hand corner, my coordinates are well up now. If I give my code another run, it will move me back to almost the center of the world, right next to where the pool is built. Okay, so that's really handy to have at the start of your code as well, telling the player where they are going to spawn. All right, so that is pretty much it. That's how you add yourself a swimming pool into your Minecraft world. Yeah, um, in our next video, we're going to have a look at doing a bit of gardening. We're going to add some trees into our world. So I'll catch you in that video.